This episode of the Kutu Muay Thai Podcast is brought to you by PMTLifestyle.com, authentic Muay Thai lifestyle by Kutu. Definitely go check out the website at PMTLifestyle.com for some awesome lifestyle merchandise that's for those of you out there either involved in Muay Thai, looking at getting involved in Muay Thai, and embrace a healthier lifestyle to live the life of Nak Muay. Go check it out. Buddy Cop, welcome to this episode of the Pu'u Muay Thai Podcast. Today is Thursday, September 21st. Just going live here on TikTok as well, so we might have some questions that'll filter in throughout the recording of this podcast. But I hope you are having a great day. I feel like the majority of people who are out there may not know too much about one championship. But I do, so I'm going to talk more about one championship today. There is a super, super banging match that's going to be coming up <clears throat> this tomorrow. So it'll be Friday. When this comes out, it'll actually be going on. So the main event, I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to go down from the bottom to top to see what the matches are. So they have a strawweight MMA bout. Slito Adiwang versus, of Philippines versus Adrian Mathias from Indonesia. And then we have Chen Rui. Versus, um, sorry man, he's from Mongolia MMA. It's uh, Shinita, I can't pronounce that man, I'm sorry. Um, he looks brutal though. <clears throat> the next one is Pecharchai, Fight Geek Muay Thai from Thailand versus Weiji King, Ching, I believe that's what that is. That's going to be in a catch weight of 127 pounds Muay Thai. It's actually uh, official Muay Thai, WBC Muay Thai weight class. And then we have next, we have Jomhad Auto Muay Thai, who actually just opened up his own gym, and he's sporting the receding hairline. He is still gangster as hell. He's going to be fighting against Song Chanoi Kid Songrit. So if you don't know Kid Songrit, if you guys watch the Lawrence Kenshin breakdowns of um, Muay Thai fighter fighting a karate fighter, that is, uh, <clears throat> I forget his name, but he's from the, the infamous Kid Songrit gym. Next up, the, by the way, Jumhod in Song Chano is at 116 pounds. Next up is going to be catch weight of 140 pound Muay Thai action. It's Swa Kim Sojor Thong Prajin. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. These names are epic. I'm looking forward to hearing how they announce this tomorrow. Uh, from Thailand versus Saman Ashuri from Iran. Uh, 140 pound fights are usually bangers. Next up, we have another Muay Thai at welterweight, <clears throat> 147 pounds, Sim Wen versus Miguel. Uh, is, they don't have the countries listed for them, so which is uh, interesting. But I think uh, Sim Wen is probably from Thailand. Uh, next up is uh, Prajan Chai, PK Sanchai from Thailand versus Akram Hamidi from Algeria. So a lot of fighters have been coming out of Algeria. And then we have Kulab Dam is from Thailand is going to be fighting against Tyson Harrison from Australia. Tyson Harrison, <clears throat> young, up-and-coming uh, Australian fighter. He's taking on the, the gunslinger name and stuff like that as well since John Wayne Parr retired. Next up, we have the elbow hunter, the elbow zombie, Mung Tai, P.K. Sanchai, <clears throat> versus Yadlek Pet from Thailand as well. Next up, we have the man who yields to no one, Sikson or Kwan Mung, versus Amir Nasiri from Iran uh, in Malaysia now, apparently. So that's going to be a good fight from Nasiri and Six on Okonmong. And then we have this main event bout at 140 pounds. It's supposed to be at 140 pounds. Um, I believe this is the weight that they attempted to make. So what happened is Rod Tang uh, versus Superlek. Rod Tang, Jet Mong Nun versus Superlek, Kit Wu Gao. Those two, this is like a very much like a match made in heaven. This is a super fight that... I was just talking to somebody today. You're not going to see these kinds of fights happen in like UFC or in boxing because these guys have too much at stake to lose. One FC makes these fights happen, makes it worth their while. So let's let's read on this a little bit. I'm reading from AsianMMA.com. Superlek Kit Mugao has missed weight badly ahead of the one Friday Fights 34 headliner. 
He's supposed to be challenging Rod Tang Jit Mong Nun for his flyweight Muay Thai title, but Superlet came in five pounds over, according to reports coming out today. The fight is set to go ahead, but now will be a three-round non-title fight. Under one championship regulations, fighters who miss weight normally lose 25% of their purse. And it's obviously a shocking thing that happened, right? We didn't expect that. Of all people, I would have expected um, Rod Tang to miss weight. It's just like a sidebar on this. And with that, too, I bet you that Superlet could have made the weight, but he would have failed the hydration testing. So 1FC implements a hydration testing at weigh-ins, so you have to pass hydration testing, otherwise the fight doesn't go on. It's for a fighter's safety. So five pounds over, that's most likely the case. It was a shocking development because Superlek is the reigning one championship flyweight title holder and was successfully successfully made weight ahead of all 12 of his fights for the promotion. So it's kind of like a weird thing that happened. It's not like he's coming off a long layoff either. The 27-year-old has already fought four times this year and has made weight ahead of all these flyweight fights. And I'm just going to say for myself that maybe it's his body. Maybe his body's telling him, like, hey, man, you got to slow that down. Uh, who knows how he's making weight and stuff like that too. And that's that's miles on your body. In the build to this fight, Super Lek was talking about retirement. Ooh, so maybe some injuries, feeling burnt out. After his issues with scales, many fans were speculating that the reigning one championship flyweight kickboxing champion might be having issues with his health. Hopefully not. Um, earlier in the day, Superlek had posed with two belts over his shoulder in a pose that now seems very premature, <laughs> obviously. Uh, one is a kickboxing title that he already holds, but he lost his chance to challenge for the Muay Thai strap on scales. So by coming in overweight. So this is definitely one of the biggest fight cards for one Friday night fights. Friday night's fights, uh, 35 by one championship. And it's going to be, of course, at the infamous Lumpine Stadium like they have every Friday, free, on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on Friday, go check it out. The video on demand has always been free until this point. So the fight with Rod Tang and Super Black is definitely one of the biggest headliners. It'll be uh, going head-to-head, and but... With this too, it's kind of lost like some of like the prestige because I really wanted to see Superlek. Like I love Rod Tang. If you guys don't know me, I have like a signed limited edition print of Rod Tang. Um, there's ten copies. My friend Matt Lucas, who's been here on the podcast before, um, hooked me up with one limited edition. Chatry from One Championship has one of them as well. They have one at uh, Fairtex with Mr. Wong's office. Uh, Matt has one. I think a couple other people around the world have them. But I'm I'm a Rod Tang fan. Fan. I like what he's doing for the sport and helping it grow. More people know who Rod Tang is than they know what Muay Thai is, honestly. Um, but this is definitely a blemish. I I thought that Super Lack was going to be coming in with the upset, and this is not the kind of upset I was thinking about. I was thinking about him stealing this win, right? Getting the win and kind of showing people what Muay Thai is about. But, right, you know, like I, I said here in this article, Rod Tang has had issues of his own at the scales, made weight ahead of this fight, and agreed to fight Super Lek despite the five pounds difference. So he could have said no, I'm not fighting, but he took the fight. Um, they're surely going to get an opportunity to explain kind of like what happened later on. Like, I'm sure Super Lek will come out and see what happens. And let's hope that he get, continues to fight after this one as well. Um, and, you know, just talking about the retirement and stuff like that, who knows what's going on with Superlek, uh, why he'd be talking about that. Like maybe, he's, hey, this is my retirement fight. He's been around a long time. Uh, for those that don't follow, like, Muay Thai inherently from way back when, like the stadiums when Superlek was fighting as a teenager and stuff, man, these these guys are like, one championship's giving them an extension on their on their career to make some additional income and, and build their fan base and their credit. So uh, props to one championship for doing that too. A lot of people like to harp on some of the negatives of it, but the reality is they're doing some good stuff for these people that would normally be used and, and abused by the time they're 22. So they're giving them a nice extension on their career that can help them further build up what they're doing in Muay Thai. All right, so if you are live on TikTok, thank you so much for tuning in. I see we got a handful of you in here as well. If you are a first-time listener of the Pu'u Muay Thai podcast, welcome. I want to just take a brief moment to say to go check out the podcast website, podcast.pu'umuaythai.com. You can submit your questions, any questions you have about the podcast. Also, shout-outs. If you want to immortalize one of your friends in a shout-out, 
or your coach, you want to give out a shout out to your coach, just submit a question in the form, submit the shout out, we'll read out here live on TikTok to our 23,000 followers and to our thousands of followers worldwide on our podcast. All right. So um, I'll get my do my best to get through all these as well. Uh, kind of just been filtering through and seeing these and figuring out how to best uh, address some of these too. But I'm going to go over to the Muay Thai community discord server. We have some more questions coming on here as well. Uh, as always, go check out the Muay Thai community discord, Muay Thai discord.com. Okay. Again, that's Muay Thai discord.com. So, um, one of the things that I, I see people asking a lot is they're asking about gloves. Like, what kind of gloves, like, you know, oh, I don't want to spend too much on gloves, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the thing. If you've been training Muay Thai for over three months, it's time to invest in some real shit. Okay, let's just be real here. You want to invest in some real gloves. All right, these things are going to, they're going to be with you a long time. If you've been training for over three months, you're going to be training for at least another year. It's just most likely that's like what I'm going to see in people is if they're training over 100 days, they're going to last a much long time. And I see Sam holding you on TikTok says, real leather gloves, best investment I've ever made. Absolutely, Sam. So um, there is some good synthetic leather gloves for those of you that are like vegan, stuff like that, that prefer that. I'm plant-based, I'm vegan, but I will use leather gloves because they're just better. They last longer. All right, and I do appreciate it. So uh, when it comes into gloves, there's so many different options. I've actually made a couple videos on picking gloves, and uh, I just did a recent review of RevGear. Uh, RevGear hooked me up with some gloves. Shout out to them. Uh, go check it out on our Amazon review page. It's currently up on there. I, I'm reviewing the S5 All-Rounder glove. I actually have it out here for training tonight as well. So I'm going to keep uh, putting those things to the test as long as they last. Sam Holden says, I wasted money on some $30 to $70 gloves and replaced them twice. Just did not hold up. That's right, man. And the thing is, it's like, hey, if you're going to drop $90 to $120 on your gloves, they're going to last, right? They should. Um, especially like a handmade in Thailand glove or a Cleto Reyes. These, these high quality are grants like or winning. These gloves are going to last you a long time. And the savings you get on a budget glove, right? So like let's say like a $50 glove. You're going to end up, you know, having to buy another pair or getting the correct pair, the one that you really wanted, but you didn't save up for because you wanted to budget and go out and go party at the bar or whatever it may be. You're having to waste more money. Sam Holden says $85 and up for premium gloves is where it's at. Add some genuine leather and synthetic leather Fairtex. I have the synthetic leather Fairtex gloves too, Sam. Uh, shout out to you. He's over at the Easton Training Center, if I'm not mistaken, over in Colorado. Um, and, you know, definitely the synthetic Fairtex gloves have held up pretty nice. I've had one for like three years. has light use on it. I have no issues with it. Thing where it holds up great. Things hold up great. So I have this is just a lot of questions. People trying to skimp on these gloves. Some uh, brands for you to think about. So Twins. If you can get a hold of Twins and you're in the U.S., if you know about this, you know about this. If you don't, go search up Twins USA Scam. All right? Just go search it up. Just Type that into Google, okay? And you can go look that up yourself. Um, second uh, is going to be like um, winning, right? Actually, not winning. That's, that's very expensive. Second is going to be windy. Windy. You can see how I got that uh, mix up. Windy is actually a break off. Uh, twins is a break off of windy, all right? They're the twins started windy. One of the twins broke off, started twins. Uh, I got mine around Christmas two years ago, and they look and smell brand new. That's awesome, Sam. Glad to hear that, man. Thanks for sharing that too. So um, when you come into, uh, so you have Twins, Windy, all right, you got Fairtex. Fairtex has some different qualities of gloves now too, all right? Different quality of gloves now as well. With these gloves, I recommend the leather ones. The synthetic ones are nice too. They make some nice bag gloves like we're only practicing on punching. People don't really understand what bag gloves are for. Bag gloves for me are when I'm lazy or I'm traveling and I can't pack a big pair of gloves. Like I go to town, I bring a pair of bag gloves to have when I'm there. No matter where I'm traveling, I have a small pair of gloves that I could bring with me. They have 
They still have padding around the knuckle and stuff like that as well. You can feel more of your knuckle contact, so I'm working on my punching form, so that way I can focus on getting more pop on my punch. People are saying it's to condition your hands. I, I call BS. It's conditioning to where you need to hit on your knuckles, all right? And if you guys are watching live here on TikTok as well, do me a solid double tap screen while you're sitting here watching. Just sit here, just double tap with your thumb. Simple. That helps us get boosted in front of more people, helping share Muay Thai, okay? So, fair text, right? Next up, we have uh, some other ones as well. We have Sandy. Sandy is actually the longest running Muay Thai equipment brand in Thailand. They're very old school. They're great. My friend JK is the distributor over in Thailand for them. I believe Century Martial Arts bought the distribution for the United States. So if you're looking for Sandy, I believe Century Martial Arts, of all places, bought the distribution rights for it here in the USA, in Canada, I believe. So go check that out. Sam, thanks for the likes, man. Um, going forward with that, all right, Sandy, they make great gloves. I, I love my Sandy gloves. They're classic, right padding, right stitching, right amount of uh, padding on the palm and on the ridge of the hand. I love them. They're honestly some of my favorite all-around gloves. Nothing fancy about them, but they just, they freaking work great and they're consistent. And I love the leather quality on them. They're not overstretched, not overstuffed. It's the right amount of volume of leather that's put around the glove and the stuffing that's in there. Some people, some manufacturers, what they'll do is like, they'll take a, four, a 12 ounce glove and in order to make it a 16 ounce, they won't put more leather material in there. They'll just put more stuffing in there to save money. And this is like the difference between these budget gloves and these more premium, good quality gloves that are going to last you a long time. All right. So um, after Sandy, uh, then you're going to get into some different brands that I, I'll say like Venom makes a decent glove, but they also will have some budget stuff where they're doing that stuff where they're not putting as much material around the stuffing. They'll start tearing. They use less stitching to save on their cost. And that gives you savings as a consumer up front but then you're gonna be paying for it on the back end and buying new gloves every six to 12 to like 18 months right you want to be able to have a pair of gloves that are gonna last a couple of years as like a recreational user not recreational user and they're gonna they're gonna be done in six months that's just not good it's not a good quality glove all right so you definitely want to make sure that you invest in that so then you're gonna get into some other specialized gloves you're gonna you know we have winning all right uh oh my god i forgot one of the other tie brands Top King. Top King makes some great shit. They make great gloves, great shin guards as well. Uh, they did a rebrand. I'm not a fan of their new logo. I've kind of seen a couple of other brands doing a rebrand. Um, you know, Fairtex has their Ute line. That's their version of doing a rebrand, which I think is smarter, by the way. Rather than making the Fairtex label look completely different, they made a new brand. So Sam says, I hear so many good things about the Top King shin guards. Sam, absolutely. The shin guards for Top King are great. Those were my go-to until the Twins came out with their new, newest design. The Twins shin guards are actually a more sleek version of the Top King shin guards. So funny story about this, too. I'll get into all the equipment here in a little bit. But those are that's it really for the tie brand. There's some other offshoots that are out there. But those are like the main ones that you'll see listed up and around there. And the thing is, kind of going into this is where it's funny is everybody gets their stuff made in the same place except for Fairtex, I believe. They used to. So um, with all this equipment, they're all made in the same warehouse and the same people in Thailand. What happens is they have like the recipe. Hey, I want some more padding here. I want less stitching on this side. I want more stitching on the palm of the glove or the shin guards. I want to make it a little more sleek. I want you to use a different padding, different foam that's higher density, lighter weight, more streamlined. All right. So Top King had great shin guards. They were the best, in my opinion. And then Twins came out with their bougie-ass shin guards that are very lean. And they had a higher density foam that was lighter, and it kept the shin guards smaller. All right. And I loved it. It made it feel like I was no longer like a, you know, a transformer with these big old shin guards on. They worked great. I loved them, but I didn't realize how clunky they felt until I tried these Twins on. So... Uh, but Top King is a great one, and you can still get it here in the U.S. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, looking right now, making me want to spend some money, man. <laughs> hey, Sam, if you're looking at the Twins shin guards, do not buy them from Twins USA. Don't buy them from there. Go look up Twins USA scam. Okay, go search it. All right. Um, but kind of going into uh, with that is they all make their same manufacturer, same warehouse, 
everybody gets made from the same people. They just make some small adjustments. So for the longest time, uh, Top King had the leading design, in my opinion. All right. Uh, knock my wholesale, a good supplier. Yes, from my experience and from what I know, you will get your stuff from Knock My Wholesale. Or you can hit up my friends at Authentic Muay Thai Supply. All right, AuthenticMuayThaiSupply.com. They might not list the twin stuff, but you could always call them and ask. Okay, a little insider tip. They're based in California. Shout out to my friends at Authentic Muay Thai Supply. Um, great people based out of California, family based business. We just had them on the previous episode of the podcast. We had Kay on there and her husband Phil, who was not on there, but shout out to Phil um, for helping us with some supplies at Pu'u Muay Thai. All right, um, but. That I, I'm seeing a lot of people asking about gloves in here. There's like a whole conversation about gloves. And do not skimp, all right? Let's go into glove weight, all right? Glove weight. So many people come in, they're like, I need 16-ounce gloves. Okay, why do you need 16-ounce gloves? The time you need 16-ounce gloves is when you're sparring, okay? That's when you need 16-ounce gloves. That's when it is required to have 16-ounce gloves. As a full-grown adult, you're going to be wearing 16-ounce gloves. But what if you're a beginner or you're not sparring? You're going to be looking at a 12 to a 14 ounce glove. And I'll tell you why. I was telling you earlier about the bag glove and working on the technique of my punch to get my feel my knuckles on the bag, right? Or on the pad. This is important for a beginner because they need to feel where they are punching. I started with 16 ounce gloves. I remember taking the glove off not knowing how to throw a freaking punch. Because I was not aware of where my knuckles were hitting on the pad. So you need to get smaller gloves when you first start. That way you start learning to feel where your hand is landing. You don't need those big 16 ounce gloves when you first start, guys. You don't need them. We give our students 12 to 14 ounce gloves, 14 ounce for the heavyweights, 12 ounce for everybody else. If you are a kid, you're going to be having a different size. But this is mostly for adults. Sam says, I think 12s are perfect for beginner gloves. Helps to be aware of not only the knuckles, but for the wrists. Absolutely. The 16 ounce gloves, as you know, they put more of the weight up on the hand, right? So 12 ounce, they're going to have more evenly weight distribution amongst everything, right? If you punch wrong with a 16 ounce glove, really easy to twist your, uh, twist your wrist. Absolutely, Sam. Great tips. And this is very important. And I see so many people come in. Oh, I want a 16 ounce glove. We give them a 14 ounce. I need a 16 ounce. Well, why do you need 16 ounce? I read online that I need 16 ounce. Here's the thing. This comes a lot from boxing and some bro science, okay? So it's a mixture of both because in boxing, they have two weapons. They're, hand, they're boxing, right? Hands, that's it. So they're going to put a little weight on their glove from the get-go, all right, in boxing. But in Muay Thai, you have more weapons, okay? So you need to learn how to get efficient with punching as fast as possible, all right, and not worrying about building up your shoulders as much like using a 16-ounce glove on the pads and the bags, man. So... Really just take this advice um, as a professional perspective on it. Uh, this is someone – I've trained thousands of people. Uh, been now – Pu'u Muay Thai is coming up on 10 years. Been doing Muay Thai for 16 years. And it's not like Muay Thai. Like I did the same thing in Muay Thai for 16 years, guys. Been like constantly trying to get better and see what's better. All right? We're always trying to get better ourselves. And that's the thing. I've seen a lot of people who stagnate in their knowledge. And they don't go out and go seek it. They don't go to seminars. They don't go train with world champions. They don't go do these things. And it's important. And do it for yourself as a beginner if you're listening to this right now. Or if you're watching on TikTok. Do yourself a favor. One, watch a lot of Muay Thai fights. Okay? Number two, never stop learning. Always be a beginner. All right? I'm visiting by a uh, Muay Thai camp tonight. Uh, to go train, and I am very much looking forward to learning and being a student. Sam says, ask as many questions as you can. People love it. Absolutely, Sam. Questions, questions, questions. We want questions as instructors. Coaches want questions. We coach because we want to give knowledge to you. And if we don't know the answer to your question, guess what? We want to know what it is. This is what I always tell people during my introductory lessons. So it's very important for you to know that too. I can't count how many times a coach and I had super long calls after class about techniques. Sam Boom. That is exactly it right there, my dude. This is why we started the Pu'u Muay Thai podcast. If you go back and listen to episode one, it's us talking about this stuff. This is how this 
podcast started. Those very long commas, we'd have with students, with coaches, and you know, class finished at eight thirty or nine o'clock. All of a sudden, it's midnight. That's how this podcast started. All right, so ask those questions. Send them in on the Putu Muay Thai podcast. Like if you're Sam, if you're talking to some of the coaches, uh, I'll give you guys credit. I'll read out on it. You know, put your thoughts on it too, and I, I can uh, share here and create discussion because. These topics are things like there's so many times that I wish I would have had a mic stuck right in front of me for when we were talking about this stuff. And that's why the Putu Muay Thai podcast started back in 2019 because we were going strong already by that point and we'd always have these conversations. All right. But with that said, I am going to wrap up the podcast here. Again, go submit your questions to podcast at puumuaythai.com. Just click on submit question. Also, if you want a shout out, you want to give a shout out to your coach, a student, a friend, a family member, you want to immortalize them here on the Pu'u Muay Thai podcast, go click on submit a shout out. All right. Thank you so much. All right. That's it today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys are listening on iTunes, please go leave a review. It means the world to me if you enjoy the content, if you like hearing about all stuff that has to do with Muay Thai and what we're doing. 